Content warning before we get started, this episode contains images of medical trauma and something that we would potentially consider to be torture. There's been a lot of conversation about what might have been going on with King George and Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton story, and I'm here to break it down for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney, a licensed clinical social worker and doctor of clinical psychology, and I'm reacting to episodes three and four of Queen Charlotte. Here we go. I thought they were not speaking. It's coronation day. It does not matter if they speak, they must be united, so where is he? The king shall be with her soon enough. He is studying his sciences up in the library. Oh, he saw the doctor. That's a physician. Emsley, you have seen nothing. Already trying to hide whatever it is that's going on. It makes sense because he's the king and it's also something we still deal with today. Yesterday? Mother was going on and on to all the ladies at tea. That their love means we now live in an unnatural society. In an unnatural society? What is unnatural about our society? And yes, I will serve her at court. She's our queen. That makes her special. But the rest of them? The so rest of them? Mm. Do you know, the men can go to White's now, like regular gentlemen. And Mother, they are gentlemen. Daddy always defines a gentleman as a well-educated man of good family. Lord Danbury attended Eton with the King's father, and Lord Smythe Smith and Lord Cummings were both at Harrow. Pilot Ledger, stop talking this instant. <laughs> that is too much thinking. That is too oh, much thinking. There's been two times already in this series where women have been told that they think too much or are too educated. We saw it in episode one where Charlotte's brother told her that he let her read too much. I allowed you to read too much and I indulged your every whim and frivolity. And now you can see that the mother is telling this young Violet that she's thinking too much. That is too much thinking. Racism is not something that is typically inherent. We do have something called implicit bias. We do have the desire to want to be around species or individuals that are like us because we can anticipate behavior more often. However, racism is different outside of implicit bias and racism is not inherent. It is taught and it is learned. And you can see that very specifically, this mother is saying, daughter, you are engaging in too much thinking because when you actually think about whether or not not, this is humane and this is logical. The only explanation at the end of thought is that it's not. Violet's mother has a tendency to judge people superficially and aesthetically. When she's talking about Queen Charlotte, she is specifically saying that she will accept her. We all saw her. Of course. I accept her. Then she makes a very key point to say the rest of them, as though they have not reached a societal level to deserve the respect that Queen Charlotte has. <laughs> I like that, Dad. Day. Happy Coronation Day, Violet. Can you marry a dollhouse? Can you embroider me an heir? Then shush, the first ball of the season. <laughs> They're here. Us? I, I cannot possibly... That is not what tea is for. Well, perhaps you should not attend. Perhaps you should stay home with me. <laughs> <laughs> she does not want to do that. Oh. Can you please help me get this off my head? Steadfast on becoming with child. I am steadfast. It is all I do. All we do. Try to fill my womb with a baby. We did agree to even days. We did. The sooner you are with child, the sooner we can cease this performance. This happens all the time in relationships, and they haven't been together for that long, but there is something that we know exists between the two of them. They have a deeper connection than they are being able to express at this time. I used to work with couples in the beginning of my career. I would see this happen so frequently where they thought that the love was lost, but what was actually happening was that the love was just buried under all of the things that life has placed onto them. And when those things were released, processed, consolidated, compartmentalized, resolved, the love showed again and they realized that they still wanted to be with one another. Yeah, it can be awful. It is. It is awful. <laughs> it's not awful. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Hmm. You know, this is tension and this is also passion. 
This is feeling trapped and not knowing what to do. Shall I leave? See, the connection is so there. I should like to do something for poor mothers in hospital. Uh, orange? <laughs> Picking those oranges is ridiculous. Also, you will meet your ladies in waiting tomorrow. Primsy, what doctor? She's his wife, she should know. There is nothing to know. Hmm. What is it? He would think they would want to examine the queen as well. Tis all anyone cares about, me making a baby. You'd think there would be doctors all over me. Instead, you were the one seeing doctors in the cellar. Seems important to you that we were in the cellar. Because the cellar feels like a secret. The cellar is where his examination room is. That is all? That is all. Hmm. Do we think there will be a baby soon? I have not noticed any signs. Keep your attention on it. There is pressure. From Lord Bute. It is none of your concern where the pressure comes from. Perhaps a ball would help with the great experiment. A ball? Lord Danbury and I would like to throw the first ball of the season. No, that will not be accepted. Your Highness, I know you would like our teas to continue. It would be difficult for you to hear about the Queen being with child long after the fact. This is so smart on her behalf. <sighs> so when she would let you know about the ball? No. She was not enthusiastic. There will be no ball. You are every bit as good as they are. Hmm. She is in this relationship. We could even be so bold as to consider her a child bride with how long she's been married to Lord Danbury. And she has to dissociate and disengage when she's having sex with her husband because it's not something that she would do if she was in a different position. And at the same time, she's able to see her husband as a human being, as a human being that hasn't been provided justice, respect, or equality that wants that. And that lives with schemas and belief systems as we just just heard that don't worry we're never going to get what it is that they say we're going to get and we're never going to be treated equal a dangle joy in front of me never let me grasp it lady danbury is not interested in having this be the way that her life functions anymore and i think that when lady danbury is saying this to her husband she's also saying this to herself you are every bit as good as they are we can see in her actions and her behaviors that she knows that she is just as good as they are and she deserves to be treated as such. I have decided we are going to host the first ball of the season. Oh, that is... Princess Augusta gave her approval. No. Lady Danbury. By Countess Bridgerton. How lovely to see you here. Lovely. Possibly. <laughs> Unexpected, definitely. Tis my husband's birthday today. Ah, was, would, would, be, would, would mm. have been. I constructed these, oh, elaborate, wonderful hats mm. and he would wear them the entire day. That's sweet. It looked ridiculous in them. It's a good representation of grief love. that is love with nowhere to go. You are most fortunate. Fortunate? Yes. <laughs> You know, I, I fear I must have misheard you. I am, I am fortunate. You may not like today, but trust me, you are most fortunate. The Danburys are throwing the first ball of the season. I. And we, she's so mad about it. A child named Mozart. Mozart. Does she know it is? <laughs> An excellent musical ear, does she not? I mean, oh, Her Majesty is wonderful. Absolutely oh. loving Majesty, Lady where Danbury. Did you discover this young Mozart? I received an invitation to your little ball. Even using the word little is so demeaning. It is so easy for them to dehumanize, minimize, marginalize, and belittle these human beings simply by saying your little ball is just so degrading. So sad to miss it. Well, we all are, are we not, ladies? So sad. Such a shame. Perhaps another time. 
I require privacy. What are you about? Hmm? You refuse to hold court. You will not go out. I'm told we cannot bring in amusement. I have duties to attend. Well, your duties are not like those of any king I have known. I told you that I enjoy science. Part of that science is agriculture. I enjoy farming. So King George is hmm. Farmer George? Yes. Farmer George. I am Farmer George. These are the hands of a king and a farmer. Perhaps Lady Danbury can withdraw the invitations? I cannot ask her to do that. She will not like it. It sounds like Lady Danbury now has the upper hand. No, of course not. I just feel I cannot be seen to choose sides. I know that you will not attend, as the king does not accept social engagements. Is that not odd? Do you know why? I do not. Mm. There are people. We have people. Your Majesty, about the ball. Uh, I thought it perhaps it was a ruse, but every mm. day he marches into that garden. It is so curious. Your Majesty, please. Oh, what are you doing? Princess Augusta has asked me to cancel my ball. I do not understand how this relates to me. If you are not the Queen... But I am. But if you are not, mm. your life here would be very different. This was a great conversation and what it really opens up the door to is the concept of intersectionality. Many years ago, I began to use the term intersectionality to deal with the fact that many of our social justice problems like racism and sexism are often overlapping. And it's something that has been discussed more and more in the mental health field, especially when it comes to things like health-related social needs, discrimination, and social trauma. When we think about Queen Charlotte and Lady Danbury, what's one major difference between them and what's one major similarity? A similarity is the color of their skin and a difference is the fact that Charlotte is the queen. Charlotte's social class and royal positioning put her in a place where she's not going to experience the similar discrimination and bias and racism that Lady Danbury and the others similar to her are going to experience. I also think it's really important to note Lady Danbury's perspective of what she thinks is going on with Queen Charlotte at this time. You're so preoccupied with whether a man likes you. You're not some simpering girl. And it makes sense because from the seat that Lady Danbury is sitting, if Lady Danbury was the queen, she might be engaging in many different actions. The piece of information that she's missing is that she doesn't know that there is this secret that King George is hiding from Queen Charlotte. She is married to King George. She's going to have children with King George and King George is a really large part of her life. And so it may not be that she is choosing to not understand her privilege in society at this time, it may be that she's just very preoccupied with something that significantly affects her life. And as the queen, yes, it is going to be important for her to learn how to find a balance of these two things. And it's also really important for us to realize that we usually don't have all of the information that we need to make an accurate assessment of what it is that's going on for ourselves, for other people, and oftentimes in our community and across the world. Such a difficult place for Charlotte to be in. And she's so young, trying to figure this all out. She's, you know, likely contemplating and reflecting on what her duties are now as queen. And what came up for me was, I wonder what Charlotte had in mind for her life before she knew that this was going to happen. Because she existed before this. She had 17 years of life, of the ability to think about what was next and what she wanted to accomplish. And now she is where she is. And she has not had a moment to really assess what it is that this feels like for her and she's constantly pressured to just keep moving forward and I'm sure that that is very overwhelming. Hmm. You live for the happiness and the misery of a great Charlotte. nation. No. I am saying I understand. You live for the happiness and the misery of a great nation. Mm. That must be exhausting and lonely. Now, this is a good example of empathy. She has been so confused with George's behavior 
And the more that she is exposed to the royal pressures of her position in society, she understands more what George may feel like. There are a lot of different experiences that certain individuals have, and privilege plays a really big role in this. And at the same time, someone who may be afforded a significant amount of privilege may also experience their own type of struggle. And in order for them to build a support system or to have people around them that can actually understand them enough to help them move forward, it's important for them to gain an understanding of what this, even if it's privilege, privileged experience is like. And Charlotte is getting more insight into that because she has been exposed to a similar level of privilege, different but similar. And she's noticing how exhausting and lonely being in a position of power can sometimes be. I've always been this, an exhibit instead of a person. You can be a person. Yeah, can... see, this is how they even saw each other the first time they met. But I need us to do something. What do you need? Our palace walls are too high. She's learning. No one is going to come, Agatha. I thought you said they were coming. They are coming. I think they are coming. She tried to miss it. But then she received a personal I like the Majesty dad. The How could she miss an event that the king is planning to attend? <laughs> Her head would burst into flames. <laughs> Majesty King George III and Queen Charlotte. I love that he pushes through Lord to do Danbury. this for Charlotte. Thank you for having me. Your Majesty. Now, when this ball first started, the parties were still so separated. And now we see the king and queen here, the exemplary figures of the great experiment, and they have fused at least at minimum these two sides of the ball, but in general, the two sides or multiple sides of society. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm a success. Yes, indeed, I am a success. Let us go and celebrate. Oh. At this point, she has accomplished something really incredible for herself, for her lineage, and for her people. And when she says, we are a success, her husband's first response is, I am a success. <laughs> we are a success. Yes, indeed. I am a success. And she's not able to truly bask in what it is that she accomplished. And on top of that, she finds herself being used, having her body be used again for the pleasure of her husband, no matter how hard she works, no matter how cunning and how skillful she can be, her efforts are still not seen and they are still taken by someone else. Oh, did he die? My lord. So what happens now? We are... We are done. <laughs> we are done. <laughs> we are done. <laughs> the relief that Lady Agatha Danbury is expressing at the death of her husband is something that we honestly have to admit happens. What comes up for me is, is Jeanette McCarthy's book, I'm Glad My Mom Died. When someone puts you through abuse, neglect, torture, and then you're finally set free from them, it can provide you the sense of relief. She has been used as a body time and time again, and most recently, and likely more than once, she had her own successes that were ultimately taken away from her. Everything is such an act when it comes to these people's lives. And I bet you that really significantly wears down on each and every one of them. Thank you for coming to tea. Oh, thank you for inviting me. And when I wrote to say that I was unable to attend due to another engagement, how kind of you to offer up your entire week of afternoons. It really makes sense that Violet is upset with Agatha right now because the last thing that Agatha said to Violet was that she was fortunate on the day that she was grieving the loss of her husband on his birthday. <laughs> so let's see where this conversation goes. Lord Danbury disdained orphans and found girls useful only for breeding 
in you, Edmund, lives on. In me, Herman rots. Your heart is full. Mm. Mine starves. So when I called you fortunate, it is because you are. You are. Fortunate. Do we have something stronger than tea? Yes, Violet. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to know what to say when someone explains a situation or an event that they went through that you can't imagine or that you just had no idea that they were going through. And sometimes it's best to just acknowledge the intensity and how upsetting it is that what this person went through, they went through. Now, as an addiction specialist, that's maybe not the best course of action to go and use a substance to numb a pain that you don't want to feel. And at the same time, more power to you if it's not maladaptive and it's not ruining your life. Why do you think my girl's never married? I would not know, Your Majesty. Try to know. You are still his queen, forever frozen, forever mm. waiting. Go and stand over there and stop talking. Look that way, not at me. When Charlotte first became queen, she had this resistance to telling other people what to do and making people do things for her. Grimsley. I will get my own oranges from now on. Your Majesty. It is ridiculous to make someone else pick my orange. And I haven't seen the first two seasons of Bridgerton, but what I can see in this older version of Queen Charlotte is that over these years, it's likely that Charlotte has begun to consider her environment and the people closest to her as part of her. And so often we do this with ourselves where there's a part of ourselves that we wanna control and so we push it down or there's a part of us that's controlling us, and so it starts to lead and guide our behavior until we do something about it. Brimsley has been so close to Charlotte, literally five steps behind her at all times through all of these years. And so in order for Charlotte to have a sense of agency, in order for her to be able to have control of her life, to a degree, she also has to have control of these people and be willing to control their behaviors because their behaviors affect her life. It's also so much easier to escape into your position of power when you want to hide who it is that you really are because you're hurt. Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh. George. Okay, there's a lot going on here. It's the middle of the night, rapid speech, incoherent, random muscle movements, twitching, disorientation, increased energy. George! It is cold! You have nothing on your feet! Maybe dissociation from his body, if it really is that cold. Hallucinations or delusions? Farmer George. Farmer George, so smart. This is Venus. I am Venus. Matching him. I am Venus. I am Venus. Yes. Bringing him inside to safety. Here. That's very intuitive on her behalf. It's not othering someone who is experiencing a different level of reality. It's connecting with them. So she did an excellent job maintaining his ability to stay balanced enough to connect with her. And that was excellent. What you know, back then in husband? the 1700s, they would not have the information that they have today to know what was happening. There's a... The thing? You know, the thing. The thing where you enumerate the many meritorious qualities of some chosen noblewoman, and I remind you how uninterested I am in the qualities of noblewomen. Your mm. Majesty. Now I ask, is that all a king is? A royal stud horse trotted out for the chosen mayor? Or can a king rule in his own way through practical scientific study? Agricultural improvement. Mm. Tell me, what would the people prefer? A royal baby or cheap bread? What would the people prefer? A royal baby or cheap bread? He was initially introduced to us and to Charlotte, Queen Charlotte, as this individual who could be grounded in awareness and in humanity and in equality. And then we saw him acting the way he has acted to some degree in the following two episodes, where he has more of this impulsive control 
fear-based behavior. And it's been hard to determine which behavior is most common in someone like George and in George's presentation. And I've been a little hesitant, obviously as a clinician, it's easy for me to see the person beneath the symptoms, but I haven't quite known what George's baseline is. And what a baseline is, is just how someone typically presents in most circumstances when they are relaxed. How do they present when they're not too high and not too low? What is that level for them? What is that baseline for them? Now the American colonies threaten to withhold taxes and parliament revolts. The people need a king, mm. a real king. He's instantly getting a heightened level of distress and you can see Master, that some of his symptoms are beginning to surface Master, immediately. No, 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 no. Lost. Pollux, now this lost. was definitely Radius, stress and induced and you can have sort of a manic switch if it was a disorder that involved mania, but I'm not quite sure yet what's happening. So let's keep analyzing and reviewing what comes up in this episode. The symptoms remain consistent with an inflamed cerebellum. An inflamed cerebellum. I've heard some people commenting on an inflamed cerebellum, thinking that that is something that's not possible. It actually is something that's possible. It's not something that we usually see when it comes to explicit mental health disorders, but it is something that can happen as a physical disorder or a medical disorder as a result of a physical or medical condition. Just a, it is an excess of ill humor in the legs. Hundreds of years ago, mental illness was deemed to be solely the result of something that must be occurring physically. It must be the result of a physical illness and so as much as they were correct about mental illness possibly resulting from something wrong with the brain when they were referencing an inflamed cerebellum they weren't actually accurate about the mechanisms and systems that are in the brain what they are trying to do is find the physical cause for a potentially spiritual psychological or mental condition as mm. before we need new theories. This is her son. She has had so many doctors come and try to figure out what's going on with her son, and all of them have been unsuccessful. What we can also see here are some of the additional psychotic symptoms that King George may be experiencing. If we take the fact that George is experiencing some level of psychosis, whether that's mania with psychosis or a different type of psychosis, there are typically two different categories of symptoms that come up during psychosis. And we see this a lot with primarily psychotic disorders such as schizophrenia form, schizoaffective, schizophrenia, delusional disorder, and substance use disorders depending upon the substance that's being used. Usually there's two different types of symptoms. One of them is a category of positive symptoms. One of them is the category of negative symptoms. Now these aren't moral applications of the systems. It's not saying that it's good to have these positive ones and bad to have these negative ones. What it means is that positive is addition and negative is subtraction. So for positive symptoms, these are things that have been added on to this individual as a result of the psychosis. So things that could be added on would be delusions or hallucinations. These are added on symptoms. Then when we look at the negative symptoms, two of those could be really distancing and isolating yourself from other people. It's an inability or a lack of desire to even connect with other people in the first place. So that's one of the negative symptoms. And another one is reduced affect and mood and finding yourself in a position like we just saw George where he is sullen and he is depressed. So positive symptoms and negative symptoms are within psychosis. And we need to learn more to know where could this psychosis be coming from and what diagnosis may we place on the king. That the king's condition is not merely physical, but nervous. Do you understand mm. what you are saying, sir? He's that saying that it's treason. a mental concern. If the king is declared insane, he loses the throne. Not insane merely suffering a disorganization of the nerves. <laughs> Thanks. Talking. Huh. Talking to him. Are we to believe this malady can be cured with one's voice? Hmm. It depends on the voice. Beautiful and true. So this is important and it may be part of why you even watch my show 
my voice, my perspective, the way that I explain things may be really helpful for you. I'm not sure, but that might be a reason. Let me know in the comments if it is. At times, there may be ailments within someone's mind that can be cured by connection, that can be cured by someone who has an understanding of the mechanisms in the brain and the mind that are causing this person to experience this level of suffering or this level of presentation of symptoms. He's not necessarily right in that you can just talk to someone because this is often why people even say a therapist is just a friend that you have to pay to talk to. There is a lot more that's involved even when it comes to talk therapy, which would maybe fall under the category of psychoanalysis or psychodynamic psychotherapy. Listen, boy. Remember yourself. You are the king of England. You command an entire kingdom. You can command yourself too. It seems like what the doctor just did is working to some degree. We see a change in George's facial expression. We see him making better eye contact with the doctor. And we sort of see him coming back more into an oriented state where he's sort of aware of the reality that the other people around him are existing in. Now, I have to say that I haven't quite seen the ability for someone to be pulled out of a level of mania or psychosis that George may be in by simply having a 20 second statement read to him while they're holding his face. And I don't really know the level of the symptoms he was actually experiencing in this very moment. So he may have been coming down off of this episode and this conversation could have been helpful. Something that was said, however, in this conversation was that you can command yourself in the same way that you command this country as king. You can command yourself too. And while that is true in many circumstances, that we do have the ability to control how we think, feel, and behave, we also are primarily unconscious beings and we have decisions that are made in our brain before we're even aware of them. There can be mechanisms that aren't necessarily able to just be commanded at the will of the individual. And this is something that actually leads significantly to the stigma of mental health and substance use disorders. When they say, why don't you just get out of bed? Why don't you just stop using the substance? Why don't you just control your anger? Why don't you just do this or that? Simply saying you must control them without giving any coping skills on how to do so isn't the best chance of success. Okay, so this is the wedding day. Yes, yeah, see, so his hands are shaking. Of course, if you hold someone's hand, it may make it shake less. You are perfect. But to say right. that someone is perfectly right when they're not. <gasps> Wait, no. He's right. Wow. One, completely unacceptable. Report your provider if that ever happens. Holy Next, I feel like there's at least two reasons why the doctor may have done that. One reason is he's a pretentious asshole that feels like he can treat his patients however he wants to by smacking them and maybe shocking them into place. And that would be slightly different than the other reason that I can come up with immediately, which would be that he was trying to shock King George, but shock his system into a place where he's going to be able to get done what he wants to get done today. Either way, neither of those are okay. We do not want to shock our patient, at least in that way. And this was completely unacceptable. I thought you were just George. Forgive me, Her Majesty. Right. Charlotte. So now we know that he had all of this stress and all of this concern for himself and his reign as king as he was entering into this conversation with Charlotte. He's trying to protect himself and protect her and protect his marriage. When he says, I decide, I am your king, I decide. I decide, I have decided I am your king. So she takes it personal as intentional displacement and he immediately realizes, wow, that was more automatic and unconscious than I wanted it to be. And I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to act this way. If she were <laughs> ugly, if she were dull, I might feel myself up to the task. Instead, her brilliance shows the, shows the troll I am. Oh. Where is he? Your Majesty, we were not expecting- Where is he? The observatory. Your I love that they're showing the other side of this. 
I do not know a single soul here except for you. I'm completely alone, and you prefer the sky to me. George! What? Say something! See, she thinks that it's her, and he thinks that it's him, or he knows that it's him. This inability to communicate is a really important aspect of what happens in relationships when somebody has a mental health issue. It's not that they're incapable of communicating. I mean, they are to a degree. They don't have the language. They don't have the understanding to explain what's going on. But at the same time, this mental health issue with King George has been deemed such a hush hush concern that nobody really wants to talk about it. In a way, forced to treat someone that he initially cares for in this way to protect himself and her. Look. I have learned a thing or two about science, and one thing I have learned is this. Scientists keep the best of it to themselves. Of course he could not risk failure, or God forbid harming his sovereign, so he would employ only his safest, his most proven treatments, keeping the cutting edge of his methods mm. to himself until they are proven beyond a doubt. Do you understand me now? Mm. I would require rooms in the palace, full access to your majesty at any time, and license to pursue more extreme measures anything the desperation in king george to get better to be cured to prevent forever these fits ever happening again is a really devastating thing to realize there are so many people around the world that are desperate for a solution to their pain. They are living this one life that they have the opportunity to live and experiencing more pain than they feel they can handle to the point where it's experienced as suffering and there are no solutions. The healthcare system in most countries is completely inaccessible and there are providers that should not be trusted. There are people in every profession that should not be trusted. And unfortunately that includes the medical and mental health field. Science is an emerging field that's always coming out with new information. But my immediate concern here is that this doctor seems to have a very egotistical perspective on his success rate when it comes to patients. And this is why we say, evidence-based practices because what that means is that the practices have been tested on the symptoms or conditions that the practices are supposed to help and enough times the results have been that it's clinically significantly helpful and so i'm worried about these procedures that this doctor might be moving forward with especially considering the fact that we're in the 1700s You have not learned to obey. You have not learned to obey? You have never known the salubrious powers of Spartan habits. Okay. There has been a lot of talk recently about cold temperatures, cold exposure, cold plunges. Uh, they call me the Iceman because I do all kinds of extremes in the cold. And I show through evidence-based studies that our autonomic nervous system can be influenced. And how these can help the nervous system. Yes, they can help the nervous system. They can help you build resilience. They can help you widen your window of tolerance. That's not what's happening in this instance. You can see that his nervous system is becoming more activated. It's not gradual exposure. It's immediate flooding, which is something that can be helpful in some conditions, such as phobias. But but usually gradual exposure is better because it's less traumatic on the body. Already these procedures seem like these people think they know what they're doing, but they are not doing it right and are causing more harm than support. Simple this is like way. punishment. This is deprivation. This is saying until you're better, you deserve nothing all, you have healthy, never comfortable, or safe. Submission. Submission. Do you understand me, boy? In here, you are just another animal in a cage. And just like an animal, I will break you! How much longer? As long as right. it takes to achieve Why am I not goal, seeing progress? Our, agreement. our goal was to restore me to myself. Much more of this, and I will not have a self to return to. 
Exactly. This doctor is treating King George like an animal, not like a human being that has a consciousness that involves a perception of self. Our perception of self as a human being is so important for our ability to one, have a sense of self, two, have an identity, three, have our ego be strong enough to be able to keep ourselves alive and to keep ourselves moving towards the advancements of our goals that we have in life. And when we go through torture, abuse, neglect, discrimination, racism, anything that dysregulates our nervous system, anything that would be deemed traumatic, it can eliminate us feeling like we are anything more than an animal. And the unfortunate thing is, is it seems like that's this doctor's intention. Yeah, terror. we don't need to it's, it's break basis. people to help them heal. But from that terror, they already feel broken. Result? The wolves transform their wolves into this thing. See, boy, animal You're going to domesticate the king in the way that we have strength, domesticated animals. You can mold it. I will do to you what the Germans did to their wolves. I cannot be with her. Perhaps I could be near her. Look at her. She's playing chess with herself. She is mad. I believe she is lonely, Your Majesty. That's the dog that he gave her? My dog is missing. Soon enough, an animal tires of its cage. Do you agree, Doctor? No chair today. <clears throat> uh, Your Majesty, boy, I boy. command you to stay. Sorry. I Doctor. command you. Today I would rather. You know who you're talking to? I could run and fetch a crust of bread or, or some stew. Thank you, sir. No. I think I shall dine with my wife. I love this. I love that he said no to what was deemed to be the appropriate medical techniques. And instead, what he decided to go do were things that I think may be more helpful for his mental health. He makes the decision to get outside, to move his body, and he says that he's going to go have dinner with his wife and connect with her. I think I shall dine with my wife connection, movement, purpose, meaning, and agency, just simply making that choice, those are things that can be so healing for someone like George. Obviously, he has symptoms that may need more intense intervention, not as intense as this doctor was trying to do, but these are also really important. Okay, we're back to the twitching the tapping. It's so scary. So devastating to feel so unsafe and out of control. He feels so Why happy to be able to meal, show up with her. Mm. And she is you... pissed. It makes sense that she is. With the lack of information. They're moving in together. <laughs> I'm afraid I'll consultations may become rather less frequent. Alas. That's yes, such a change you don't control his consequences life. consequences for your health. My health. Doctor, I feel healthier than I have in years. That might not be true, where he feels healthier than he has in years, but it also might not be true that if he stops engaging in these treatments, it might be detrimental for his health. We don't quite know the doctor's true intentions. Their connection has never been equal enough for them to truly understand what would be the best option moving forward. This doctor was very controlling, and so it makes sense that George's response after not wanting to be controlled would be to control the situation and back away. She is gone. Your mother has departed, Your Majesty. I saw to it myself. And Charlotte? The Queen is at breakfast in the dining room. If you would like to join her, I can. Shall I send for the doctor, Your Majesty? Yes, yes. Get him here. Okay. Mm. No more even days and odd days. We shall just have days. Mm -hmm. We do not resume treatment soon. We risk losing everything we have accomplished. We, you and I, Doctor, have accomplished nothing. 
Anything accomplished for me has been the work of my bride. Her methods have done more for me than you and your chair ever could. Something to point out, the way that George just supported Charlotte in her actions and saying these actions are Charlotte's actions and they have made so much progress in all of our lives, including in mine, that is so different than the relationship between Lord and Lady Danbury. There is so much privilege and fortune that goes into being with somebody who sees you as a human being and respects you for what you've accomplished and doesn't want to take your agency away from you. We can take for granted the things that bring us joy, comfort, and safety when we don't realize that there are so many other people on the planet that would do almost anything to feel the way that you get to feel. Free reign to your most capricious urges. Damn right, George. Take the knife back. So does she. When I was a boy, Refusal to eat my peas was the potential ruin of England. How An incorrect sum at mathematics, the potential ruin of England. The terror nearly broke me. The terror nearly broke me. Before we engage as doctors or clinicians in any type of intervention with any patient or client, we need to get an accurate history. We need to understand what it is that the body, brain, and mind of this individual has already been through, what's worked and what hasn't. If the doctor did an accurate analysis and evaluation before just moving forward with the interventions that he wanted, he would have been able to know that interventions that would activate terror in this individual would maybe not be the best option. The one time that George opens up to this doctor is to describe his life through the lens of terror. And the only thing that the doctor has used to try to treat George thus far has been terror. We have to know who we're treating and why, and not just try to make our own techniques successful. I thought that terror was the price of being royal. Now, I have met a woman who is never terrified. <laughs> and she is the most royal person I've ever known. You will never treat me again. You are no longer my doctor. Oh, a pity. Nevertheless, I remain the Queen's. Oh, great. But why would she need a doctor? Well, because obviously she is with child. Oh, so you're going to treat her? She was not sure, but I have. You are not a pregnancy doctor. Congratulations, Your <laughs> Majesty. Finding out something as potentially special as having a child with someone that you love to be told by the doctor that just tortured you for however long, it just mm, doesn't make it the best news. <laughs> you know, it really is a form. It seems like of stress-induced psychosis. There are many different types of disorders that can involve psychosis, and I've listed off a few of them already. I think two of the ones where people kind of get confused because they see the presentation of psychosis would be bipolar disorder one, which involves mania with psychotic features, or schizophrenia. The biggest difference, and this is really simplified between bipolar and schizophrenia, is that bipolar involves episodes of ups and downs of mania and and or of depression. Schizophrenia involves those more positive and negative symptoms directly. So someone who experiences schizophrenia is going to be experiencing hallucinations and or delusions. Bipolar one involves mania that can also include psychosis. It does appear that not only has his life been really stressful, but he also has these episodes where he experiences manic symptoms. Without having any medical analysis, with this being a TV show, with us knowing that this is fiction, Based on what's presenting, I think we can say that it may be some level of mania that absolutely has a psychotic component to it. What we don't know in order to make an accurate assessment based off of the series so far is one, an accurate evaluation and assessment of his entire history and presenting symptoms, how he feels internally and subjectively as he's going through these experiences, how long these symptoms actually last, what alleviates them and what makes them worse. And based on what's presenting so far, we know that there are some psychotic features and that he may be in a manic episode. So far, that's what I've got. Pharma, 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 George, Pharma. 
You know, even right off the bat, the fact that she doesn't immediately get afraid of what's happening and moves towards what's happening to take care of them. It really just shows that she may be in touch with her own ability to feel out of control at times. And we've seen that that is the case. The knives at Buckingham House used to be sharp enough. Then one day they were all dull. It happened to be the day the king joined me. Yeah. Yes. I believe she's really catching on. Fast she's smart. Yes, ma'am. What I could not quite convince myself was a coincidence, though, was when the library set of Shakespeare was suddenly missing King Lear. Forgive me, I am not a Shakespeare enthusiast. The one about the mad king, because the king is mad and I live in a mad house. The king is merely exhausted from holding the greatest nation in the world on his shoulders. Now, that's not fully what's going on, right? It's not just he's stressed out and if he wasn't stressed out, it would go away. Less stress is always helpful. We want to have some level of stress, keeps our nervous system active, keeps us capable of being aware of something that's potentially dangerous. We need stress, anxiety, and fear. The thing is, is we usually don't need as much of it as we have. You would do anything to stop the cracking. You would engage hideous doctors and a thousand disgusting treatments. You would scour Europe for a queen grateful enough to aid him. You were nothing. You came Come on. Me. Now you sit at the helm uh, of the world. But you don't really you deserve any of this, so just deal with it. It cannot be for a man I do not know. A man mm. I was not allowed to know. For a lie. Oh, he goes back to the doctor. Your Majesty. You know, this is uh, devastating. To feel so trapped in yourself and not know what to do to get yourself out of it. I have been there. If you have been there, I'm sorry that you've experienced this. I'm curious what your thoughts are on how George presented, on my analysis of how George presented. Please make sure to like this video if you haven't liked it yet. Hit that notification bell. And as always, I'm so glad that each and every one of you exist.